Here in New Mexico, a serial killer is at large. For over 30 years, someone or something has been free to sweep across the US at will, leaving a trail of over 10,000 horrifically mutilated animal victims in its wake. Death is sudden, and yet the exact cause is still unknown. <laughs> Body parts and organs are removed with surgical precision. The carcasses show signs of massive hemorrhaging, and yet the crime scenes themselves are mysteriously devoid of any blood or tissue. There are cases where farmers report seeing bright lights in the sky, army helicopters and even UFOs. As a wave of hysteria sweeps across New Mexico, we investigate just who is mutilating their cattle and ask, are the authorities covering up the most prolific serial killer in modern history? Just what are these reported mutilations and who's doing them? Cattle rustlers, Satanists, UFOs, or covert military operations? After a year of investigation, field work and analysis, we think we found some intriguing clues. They led us right to the top. The uh, curious thing about uh, cattle mutilation is that at first you you kind of think lightly of it and that it's not really that important of a call. But when you get at the scene and you actually see this animal on the ground and you see that it appears that the eyes have been surgically taken out or it, it's just kind of, it, it gives you a really weird feeling that there's some foul play involved. And as an officer, you want to investigate, you want to try to get to the bottom of it because it's something that baffles you. And it's a crime whether it's the government, a cult, or something from outer space, or inner space, or another dimension, or whatever, or whoever is doing it, it's a crime and it costs us money. Extraterrestrial biological entities have been killing and mutilating animals around this planet since at least the 1950s. And our government knows it, and our government has not wanted anyone to pay attention to it or to realize it. I truly think they're testing the cows. It's a biological type testing that they're doing and they're doing it at random. My question is, why do they bring them back? I don't know for sure what's going on there, but I do know that we have to look at uh, more prosaic explanations first before we go into the realms of, of absolute fantasy. For example, we need to look at uh, whether there are satanic cults operating in these areas. We also need to check out uh, whether we're dealing with uh, simply a combination of uh, people 
uh, stealing cattle, uh, rustling going on, and uh, in some circumstances perhaps um, these animals being predated by th uh, things like cougars and uh, wildcats. To my mind, when there is an earthly phenomenon such as cattle mutilations, albeit a very mysterious earthly phenomenon, it only makes sense to look for an earthly cause or an earthly explanation. Looking at it from the standpoint of um, a, a mystery or an unsolved homicide, if you will, um, the books are staying open until the case is solved. The first reported mutilation was believed to have been in 1967 in Colorado. The carcass had bizarre injuries and had decomposed at an unnaturally fast rate. When the owner reported that an unidentified object had hovered over her ranch the day before, the press linked the mutilation to UFOs. Since 1967, over 10,000 cattle have been carved up and left strewn across the fields of America, but no one knows who's doing it or why. The mutilations have been blamed on coyotes and wild dogs, but some say the injuries are too precise to have been carried out by a predator. In many cases, the cattle have broken limbs and what might be strap marks on their legs, which could indicate that they've been lifted out of the fields in a harness and then dropped back down to earth from a great height. Some people say that the police and government have been reluctant to act on the mutilations. In the face of such official indifference, the ranchers have turned to independent researchers and journalists for answers. In the last 20 years, investigations into cattle mutilations have been carried out by David Perkins, Chris O'Brien, Gail Stalin and Linda Moulton Howe. Between them, they've collated reports on hundreds of cases, photographed the evidence and carried out amateur forensic investigations in the field. If you've never seen one, it's totally amazing. It's, it's just, as soon as I saw my first one, I was hooked and I decided to devote my life to this. When you see a big mutilated cow on the ground, that's a pretty tangible item. A thousand pounds of physical evidence. That's always been the intriguing part of this for me is, uh, I mean, with lights in the sky or lights in the sky, they're, who knows what they could be or might have been or might be. But when you see the cow on the ground, it's, it's very, very striking. I have half a dozen eyewitnesses who, over the last 15 years, have told me total conscious that they have watched something that was round and glowing put down a beam of light. They've either seen the animal lifted up or they have seen the animal put down. As a journalist, as an investigative journalist, I have to report this is what people are seeing. This is what people themselves have experienced. And I think that all the rest of us need to pay attention to what eyewitnesses are saying. A typical mutilation is characterized by sudden unexplained death, missing organs and bizarre cuts which are only hide deep. The parts taken are similar in all the reported cases. An eye, the tissue around an eye. The sexual organs are gone. The tongue, completely so deep in the throat that it often takes the larynx and the trachea. There might be an eye removed with the eyelashes still intact and the rectal tissue in probably 95% of the cases poured out. There's no blood. You might have a little bit of pooling uh, in the body cavity. Why? Sometimes the tail. It, it's quite a sight when you see one. reports the southwest has been hit hard by cattle mutilations northern New Mexico especially so it was here in Taos in 1994 that one of the most terrifying incidents ever reported took place on September the 13th 1994 Larry Gardia a New Mexico carpenter was out bear hunting when he heard a terrifying high-pitched noise coming from the trees the noise had sent a herd of cattle into a stampede 
everything like happened so quick, you know, I mean, when I heard that noise, then all of a sudden I heard the cows that had passed and I turned around and I saw them all running the opposite direction. As they ran past him, he said he turned to see two mutilated animals on the ground. First thing I saw was the back part of the cow where it had the three inch hole. There's no, no blood, no nothing. I mean, they, it looks like they just, uh, like a laser. To me, it looks like some type of sophisticated laser that just cut right half of, it, of its right face and it cut it off. Larry said a third cow was screaming in pain as it was being dragged several feet off the ground into some trees. Larry raised his rifle and fired in its direction. When I turned back to uh, look toward that noise, where that other third cow that was alive was being dragged, and I kept looking at it, and I kept seeing that it, where he was, it was trying to get back on its feet. It was floating. I shot once, and the noise just kept on, and then second shot, I, I aimed maybe 20 feet further in front of the first shot, and that's when the noise stopped. Three dead cows were found by the police, exactly as Larry had described, in a pasture several miles from where they'd been grazing. But the officers found no tracks, no footprints, and no evidence to explain how they could have got there. So just what did happen in this field in 1994? What was the high-pitched noise? What technology can create an energy beam capable of lifting a 900-pound cow through the air? We consulted military experts at Jane's Defence Weekly, who told us that far from being UFOs, this technology is being developed by covert elements of the US military. If they have broken through that barrier, they'll want to keep quiet about it. And if it's as radical as some people speculate, then they would want to keep quiet about it, not just for a number of years, but for decades, possibly up to 100 years. Larry Gardier wasn't alone. In Cuesta, north of Taos, rancher Tom Reed was suffering repeated horrors night after night. His ranch became a centre for mutilation activity. He's kept a log of over 30 mutilations since 1994. But he says it was this incident with such horrific wounds that made him speak out. Something or somebody or whatever had made some clean smooth cuts way up inside the body cavity and just very cleanly and neatly cleaned it out. As mutilations were reported so frequently on his branch, we went out into the fields with Tom to stake out whoever or whatever was attacking his cattle. Just approximately in this area here where uh, where he found the calf. And just describe to me what you saw. The entrails had all been cut out. There was no blood or anything around the area. The animal, having been dead as long as it was, should have been stiff, but it was absolutely limp. Did you hear anything at all that night that would have led you to believe that there's this carnage happening a few yards away from us? I heard absolutely nothing. The dogs didn't bark or anything. What precautions are you taking tonight to stop this, to stop another mutilation occurring? There doesn't seem to be any precautions you can take. They seem to mutilate these animals whenever, whenever they please. After waiting for six hours in a freezing New Mexico field, Nothing happened. In 30 years, there's only been one official investigation of cattle mutilations, and this is it. In 1978, retired FBI agent Ken Rommel visited 15 mutilation cases, but without a vet and without carrying out any autopsies. He concluded that the cattle mutilations were the result of natural predators. The ranchers called it a whitewash, and since then there's been no other official investigation. Until now. 
Here in Taos, in New Mexico, the new district attorney, John Paternoster, has reopened the mutilation files and has promised to treat each individual case as a homicide investigation. The federal government was doing nothing. Uh, the state government was doing nothing. There had never been uh, an aggressive forensic investigation um, task force or protocol developed um, to give any answers. And um, our first determination was that uh, these uh, cattle mutilation events should be handled like a crime scene, like a homicide crime scene. Uh, that would guarantee that competent evidence would be uh, found at the scene, would be collected uh, for analysis uh, that would yield some hard facts. I'm glad, and I'm very, very glad that someone uh, like John Paternoster, DA of Taos County, where there have been so many occurrences, has taken it seriously. Uh, previous DAs should have. I've been shot at in this business uh, years in the past. I, uh, I don't have any fear that would uh, distract me from uh, the inquiry that is so important to ranchers in this area. One of the first mutilation cases to be investigated as a homicide was in Arroyo Seco, a rural area just outside Taos. Rancher Manuel Archuleta says he found his 11-month-old bull dead and mutilated, having seen the animal in perfect health only days before. It's a normal day. I just check my cows every morning, every day. And this day I walked out there on the 30th of April, and they were okay, just normal eating. The next morning I went to check them again. I found the bull dead. I hadn't seen anything like that before. I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it around here. Manuel called the DA's office and the task force swung into action. This particular morning, which was May 4th, 1997, uh, I was on call from 4 in the morning till 8 in the morning. Our radio dispatch advised me at approximately 7.30 in the morning that um, there was a, a farmer, Mr. Archuleta from Arroyo Seco, was reporting one of his small calves had been possibly mutilated. Within a few hours, four units from the sheriff's office had cordoned off the area and a crime scene had been established. District Attorney John Paternoster was joined by his associate Dominic Martinez and field investigator Gabe Valdez from the National Institute of Discovery Science. Donning protective clothing, they prepared for a full field necropsy. The uh, curious thing about uh, cattle mutilation is that at first you you kind of think lightly of it and that it's not really that important of a call. But when you get at the scene and you actually see this animal on the ground and you see that it appears that the eyes have been surgically taken out or it, it, it's just kind of, it, it gives you a really weird feeling that there's some foul play involved. And as an officer, you want to investigate, you want to try to get to the bottom of it because it's something that baffles you. As I approached, uh, I saw no evidence that uh, people other than Mr. Archuleta had been out there. I saw what appeared to me to be a young bull in a corner of a fence. It had a rather grievous wound uh, on its hindquarters and it had been dead for, unfortunately, a number of days uh, when we first got to the scene. We went ahead and skinned it and discovered a big uh, hole in the neck, about five by eight, that appeared to have some burn marks on it inside. We did find a substance that we just called a yellow powder. It didn't seem to belong on the animal. It was found around this neck wound, a small hole in the neck of the animal. 
The substance was analysed. It showed a lethal dose of potassium, 7,000% more than you would normally find in a dead animal. The forensic scientists in charge of the analysis had no explanation as to how it got there. Like so many mutilation cases before, the perpetrator left no calling card. There were no tyre tracks or footprints, but there was one intriguing clue, the pattern of the cowpats. We were speculating that maybe something had flown over the field and had lifted these pies and flipped them over uh, like a helicopter or something like that. It was just really bizarre. And as we started to work the crime scene, uh, we determined that there was actually a pattern. It looked like there was a corridor of these pies that had been turned over. They're talking about uh, something out of a space, I guess, UFOs. And I don't know what else to, to think. I don't know what to think, what it could be. It's a strange thing going on. Given the lack of physical evidence at the scene, um, there's no man-made print, or no animal print present, which leads me to believe that there might be um, either some advanced technology involved or that they covered their tracks uh, very, very well. We have not ruled out UFOs as a pet theory. The Arroyo Seco uh, scene did yield some very curious marks in the, uh, in the soil, in the land, around the animal that um, did not appear to be uh, natural in origin. As the team skinned the animal, they noticed that the tissue on its back was blood red, showing signs of massive hemorrhaging hemorrhaging that could only have been caused by a fatal blow from above. Is the Arroyo Seco bull a smoking gun? Does it give us our first hard evidence that the perpetrators are airborne? I have to say we ruled out, as far as I'm concerned, satanic ritual as being behind the cattle mutilation that, uh, that victimized Mr. Archuleta's herd. There was no evidence at all of any human activity around that uh, mutilated cow whatsoever. The black helicopter pet theory seems to be the most persistent of all of the theories that we have heard as, uh, as being at the, uh, the root of the cattle mutilations. The case file on the Arroyo Seco mutilation remains open. The precise surgical nature of the entry wounds, the lack of blood and tissue and entrails around the bodies, and the literal frying of the blood at high temperatures are the three big questions facing investigators. We've had uh, some testing done on the samples that I've taken, and the results have come back where it is done with very high heat quite a number of cases, in excess of 30 or 40 now, high heat has been the cutting instrument. Now, coyotes have bad breath, but not 350 degree bad breath. So we may be dealing with, uh, with something that is utilizing high technology. We are aware that um, certain of the military installations uh, in New Mexico um, have technology that uh, could very well have caused these kinds of injuries. Cattle mutilations are characterized by wounds on the animals uh, seemingly made by uh, surgical laser uh, devices, some kind of surgical uh, laser scalpels, if you will. I've discovered in recent years that the United States Air Force has such a device which they developed in-house, a field-capable a portable belt pack surgical laser that is powered by dry cell batteries. We've managed to obtain this footage of the laser pack from one of the United States' most secure research facilities. This laser would be the perfect device to cut through cowhide and remove organs in the field. The high energy laser experts in the Air Force. Weapons class lasers can consist of millions of watts of power. The same technology was used to create this self-contained laser. The laser would be used by a surgeon in the battlefield to do laser surgery. 
if we are looking at surgical lasers, just how are they transported in and out of these landlocked pastures without being detected? Strange lights in the sky and unmarked helicopters are reported just before and after mutilations are discovered. If no tire tracks or footprints are found around the animals, are the mutilators airborne? A lot of the cases I've handled, the only way you go in is with an aircraft. There's no other way you can go in. There's no other tracks leading into the, the fenced area, the ranch, and there's no other way they could have gone in. This uh, is the one that really turned my head around, uh, way out in the middle of nowhere. A female cow lying on its right side, and it's, uh, it looked like it had been dropped from at least 1,000 feet in the air. Its horn was driven back into the side of its head where it hit on that side and drove the horn right back into the skull. Uh, its leg was broken, its ribs were broken, and uh, Officer Valdez pointed out a band about perhaps two inches of indented hair. He speculated that it had been grabbed from the air uh, somehow and hoisted up by its back legs, mutilated in the air, and dropped back to the ground. There has been some cases where people have seen a cow underneath a helicopter in a harness, like it's being airlifted someplace. In broad daylight, we've got a couple of cases like that. In the mid-70s, ranchers were firing at helicopters, yeah. and uh, the public service companies had to fly much higher. Uh, there were several incidents where ranchers shot at helicopters, and that's why Long one of the one too. of the reasons why they've tried to put a damper on this because the situation was potentially very dangerous. A lot of times, ranchers say that they see helicopters that they don't hear. I've had a number of reports. Uh, people been within feet of helicopters. Most of the time, they're reported hovering just over the individual, and they're blasted by the downdraft from the from the rotors but there's no engine sound, nothing. Obviously, the jump one could make is that our, our government or military has some sort of sound cancellation or, or sound uh, noise abatement equipment that they're, they're managing somehow to render at least the motor part of the helicopter silent. This is the cutting edge of military technology, quiet helicopters. They use a no-tail rotor system, or NOTAR for short. They're designed to fly covert missions into sensitive areas without being detected. These helicopters are based at Kirtland Air Force Base, just a half hour's flight from Taos. America's top secret research facilities are also based there, Sandia National Laboratory and the Phillips Laboratory, which has developed the laser medical pack. Many investigators suspect that this could be the final destination for the organs and tissues removed from the mutilated cattle. In looking for a suspect, many say that Kirtland Air Force Base seems to have the means, the motive and the opportunity. If there are covert operatives, carrying out these cattle mutilations using uh, technology developed by the United States Air Force. Some of these units could feasibly be operating out of Kirtland Air Force Base. The description that the ranchers give me on uh, the helicopters that they see uh, hovering over their ranches or their herds matches very closely with what I see out at the base here in Albuquerque. As darkness fell on the base, we set out with a group of local investigators to stake out the skies and see whatever it is that's flying over the fields of cattle, UFOs, black helicopters, or secret military test craft. Four 
monitoring a lot of the frequencies uh, for the nearby Air Force bases, hoping to get some uh, some aircraft activity, anything they might be doing, stealth fighters, reconnaissance aircraft, things like that. We pick up a few things every now and then, and you know, if we see a ship or anything out there, sometimes it could be accompanied by an Air Force craft surveilling it, chasing it down, what have you, and we might pick it up on the scanner. It's a data yeah. channel coming in there. <laughs> uh, encrypted data uh, transmission from a stealth fighter or a stealth fighter pinging radar. They use intermittent radar on those crafts. At 1 a.m. on a freezing morning, our night sight picked up an unidentified flying object closing fast. Oh, you see that? Whoa. Yeah, what was that? Did you see that light just come on over yeah. there? Doesn't look like landing lights. We got the mark clear now, sir. We figured out what the problem is. Yeah, he's coming at us. This white light here. This this is something military, the chances are. Overhead, 300 miles. It's not blinking, it's not conforming to any sort of FAA lighting regulations. And there you're looking at it. That is a UFO. Huh, it started coming in too. What was this unblinking light traveling at great speed towards northern New Mexico? Military or mystery? It is possible to imagine technologies which are highly exotic, highly uh, revolutionary, and would change the way we feel about science today. It just seems improbable to me, but not impossible, that uh, any group could be, that relies on conventional technology, uh, could be pulling this off 10,000 times perfectly. It's the perfect crime every time, no mistakes. If the military are launching covert nighttime helicopter raids into fields of cattle, the question is why? I suspect the perpetrators of many of these cattle mutilations, and perhaps of, of most of them, and maybe even all of them, are much closer to home. In fact, I think that there could easily be covert human operations at work here that are responsible for the cattle mutilations. The liver is still sitting and they right there. Got a predator would grab that liver in the, from the inside. You, know, the you can see the inside. The whole thing has been taken out. It's this is the rear end of the cow. I don't believe the authorities are much help investigating the mutilations. They either poo foo it or they're scared of it or they back off. Or it seems like sometimes there's people above them that are pulling their strings and making them back off. National Livestock and Agricultural Associations are simply not interested in cattle mutilations. Despite the overwhelming statistics, they refuse to acknowledge that there's a serious problem. I think there is some kind of a cover-up. If the government is not involved in it, I believe they're at least aware. Nobody says much about it. And I guess they're trying to keep it sort of a secret. Cattle inspectors for the New Mexico Livestock Board have been collecting reports on the mutilated animals for years but the board's official line is clear. Cattle mutilations simply do not happen. Many believe that they are deliberately concealing reports and evidence. We are talking about a cover-up here. There is just too many coincidences. The Livestock Board knows something. They've got to know something. <laughs> Just how far does this alleged cover-up go? We've been told that government agencies are responsible for the mutilations. Government agencies that take their orders from the White House. 
The intelligence agencies have what are known as cutout operations, where there is an above board, overt uh, front door operation, if you will, while in the back room, the real business, the clandestine business goes on. I suspect the perpetrators of many of these cattle mutilations, and perhaps of, of most of them, and maybe even all of them, are much closer to home. In fact, I think that there could easily be covert human operations at work here that are responsible for the cattle mutilations. They can set up false business fronts, uh, false research fronts, uh, all kinds of false fronts to serve their needs, which they use as a screen to conceal uh, they're very dark agendas. Many believe that the National Institute for Discovery Science in Las Vegas is one such cutout operation, a front for the American intelligence services to cover up and control evidence of cattle mutilations. We went to Las Vegas to see for ourselves. From this office block here in Las Vegas, NIDS claims to research a wide range of natural and supernatural phenomena, including UFOs, cattle mutilations, and non-lethal weapons. This is the only known photograph of Robert Bigelow. He refuses to give interviews and has paid news photographers to hand over their film in the past. The investigators that we've spoken to are concerned that the Institute is collating a vast database of samples, records and, most importantly, evidence of cattle mutilations, but they're not releasing any information. We asked them for their conclusions. We're at the preliminary stage of data gathering and we can't really release a whole bunch of data until we're absolutely sure that it's uh, replicable. Unless we have a minimum of 12 to 15 fresh uh, tissue samples from freshly dead animals, we're not going to be in a position to say anything. I know that they have come up with uh, certain results that they are not sharing with the public. I, I know that for a fact. NID says it has no connection to the intelligence agencies, but this man is one of their key personnel. John Alexander is an intelligence insider. For over 20 years, he's worked in the shadowy corridors of the Pentagon on covert operations and black projects. Is the Institute a front for the CIA? I don't want to get into that. Could some of those be funded? Could some I, don't want, I don't want to talk about that on this tape. I already told you that. If covert missions are flying quiet helicopters at night into fields of cattle to sample their organs, the question remains why. The investigators think they found an answer. The flare in the sky signaled the final countdown. Northern New Mexico and southern Colorado have both in the last 20 years been the sites of underground nuclear explosions. Projects Gnome, Gas Buggy and Rulison all took place in areas which were later hard hit by mutilations. In the 1940s, the atomic bomb which ended World War II was tested near Almogordo, New Mexico, at what became known as the Trinity Test Site. The fallout from this blast spread over much of the American Southwest. For the next 50 years, an estimated 1,000 kilotons of radioactive dust fell on New Mexico, Nevada and Colorado. It's reported that many innocent civilians were contaminated, although this allegedly remains one of America's most closely guarded secrets. Some say that the authorities have been secretly monitoring the effects of this radiation for over 40 years. This is a report dated January 1993, in which the US Environmental Protection Agency admits to a massive ongoing animal investigation program in Colorado, Nevada and New Mexico, the hotbeds of mutilation cases. The aim of the project is the biological monitoring of animals, such as cattle, deer and sheep, who've been grazing near former nuclear test sites to see what level of radiation they have today.
It details here how the animals are sampled in the field, how organs such as lungs, liver and muscle are removed for testing and blood samples are taken. A blueprint, if you like, for cattle mutilations. Tissues that were being taken would be the ideal tissues that you would take off of an animal to determine the level of contamination from the environment, nuclear and whatever else is in the environment, would show up in these soft tissues in the rectal area, the genital and reproductive areas, uh, the soft tissues of the mouth and tongue. There are at least four reasons I can think of why, why there would be or could be covert government monitoring of the environment. Number one, this region of North America is downwind from the nuclear test site in Nevada, where hundreds of nuclear blasts uh, were detonated in past decades. Number two, there have been in past years and are still to the present a few active uranium mines with uh, large piles of, of uranium tailings, radioactive tailings, both in Colorado and in New Mexico. Uh, thirdly, there have been uh, actual nuclear detonations both in Colorado and in New Mexico in past decades. And fourthly, here in northern New Mexico, there are two major uh, nuclear research and design laboratories. So we certainly know that there has been radioactive contamination of the environment uh, in a major way over the past decades in southern Colorado and northern New Mexico. What we have here is a perfect readout of the entire environment of the United States and Canada, uh, virtually every state in the nation. And I started plotting this against uh, potential sources of nuclear contamination, such as the Nevada test site, and I started looking at that area where that contamination spread, which is documented. And that is virtually the same area that we're looking at for the cattle mutilations in North America. So it's almost an identical matchup. Since this kind of research has been banned, and yet there's been a need for it, there's a contradiction. There's a state governmental contradiction here. We need that research. We need it, but we can't do it legally. So what do we do? Go without it? No. Theory of, of, of uh, crime contradiction says you do it illegally, you do it clandestinely. One can't help but wonder if somebody is interested in monitoring the effect of those, those above ground tests, for instance. Why are there no mutilations, virtually none, in California, which is upwind of the test site? Uh, you put clues like this together and a picture begins to come into focus uh, that may indicate that there are covert elements of the United States government involved in at least some of the cattle mutilations. These are anomalies that uh, make me wonder if somehow we're looking at some sort of scientific testing program. If all this is true, why wouldn't the military just buy their own herd of cattle? The answer, they say, is that they need a random selection of animals to find out the true levels of contamination. One herd in controlled conditions is not much help if the aim is to find out how much radiation is poisoning American food supplies. Random samples from farm animals all over the country are needed, and the testing has to be secret to avoid mass panic. Is this the answer to the mystery of the mutilations? Have the US government contaminated vast areas of the southwest United States with radiation from its nuclear test program from the 1950s? Are cattle mutilations a covert monitoring program to test the levels of this radioactivity? Are the levels so high and the contamination so great that they dare not tell the American public? And are the alien sightings and lights in the sky nothing more than a convenient smokescreen? I think if you follow the buck, if you file, follow the trail of dollars, I think you're going to uncover uh, the cover-up. I think you're going to, I think you're going to find the source of it all. I do believe it's solvable, and I think when it is, we're going to learn more about our government than we even want to know. I would like to think that we would find who is responsible for these acts. If there's a definite pattern and we're able to gain more experience and knowledge from investigating these, then yes, we, we, we could probably come up with a uh, suspect. Uh, 
but I would like to think that the Taos County Sheriff's Department will get its man eventually. Yes. Thank you.